Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Colin Drew with our sneak peek at next week, episode number 670. For comics originally coming out September the 21st and September the 22nd. But before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shops this coming Tuesday, Drew, you told me you're already watching Why the Last Man? Oh, yeah. Um, Hulu dropped three episodes of Why the Last Man. So I had to gobble them up, and as longtime listeners of the show know, Why the Last Man is probably top five favorite comic series of all time for me. So I was super excited, and um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but it seems pretty faithful to the comic. Um, hey, good. and, uh, I, three episodes in, I, I you know, it, it got wackier as the, as the comic series progressed. So I'm hoping that they keep some of that in there. Um, cause it's pretty straightforward right now, but mm. casting's okay. Uh, I don't, I don't hate any of the casting and, um, it's, it's nice to the see. He looks like the monkey he's supposed to look like. Yeah, it's one of those little. What it? Kabuchin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's that's cool. It's 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 cool to see that um, in another medium, um, and I'm I'm hoping. What I, what I'm hoping is that they've already said you're gonna you're gonna be able to tell the whole story, either for this season or multiple seasons, because I'm afraid of a deadly class situation mm. where it's awesome but they just do like the first arc and then you never get or Jupiter's legacy and you never get to see any more you know mm. same situation where they they don't get to they move so slow because they want to get they want to have a long five year plan or whatever but they don't get to finish it so uh, I'm hopeful uh, that it that it does enough, does well enough. Hulu doesn't have much, so um, you know, Handma- *Handmaid's Tale*. This uh, that <laughs> that uh, Nicole Kidman and Steve Martin thing, and you know, not not much else. So they don't have a lot of original programming. So I'm hoping that uh, they they let this let this go for a while. I'd be excited about that. Yeah. Um, I also sampled uh, Marvel released this thing called Infinity Comics. Which is a, um, it's like a vertical comic uh, format for your phone, and um, it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's better than guided view. You know, where guided view, you like, you had to like, you tap and it go panel to panel. This is like a whole like iteration of just a really long, skinny ass comic um, <laughs> that you just sit on the crapper. And thumb through thumb through it, and you read an issue um, instead of instead of TikToks. So, uh, I, I like the I like the effort. Um, I thought it was pretty cool, you know, to just read comics that way. Um, much better than like pinching and zooming or trying to you know read a, read a comic on a phone that's not made for you, you know. Um, so hats off to Marvel for giving it a try. We'll, we'll see if it catches on. I think it's part of the Marvel Unlimited plan. So I think you have to be a Marvel Unlimited person to to get it. Mm. So I just I did the sample one that they provided, and I I, I did not um, log in and see if I could get more and all that stuff. So I just wanted to try it out. But you know anything that brings new readers in i'm i'm all for so i hope it works i hope people dig it um younger folks dig it and embrace comics in some form format so that'd be awesome um we got some kind of concerning news but i guess we should have seen it well on that on that same previous front yeah your daughter just uh got my children all interested in hoopla accounts oh nice which, Hopefully, I can segue them into some comics while they're doing that. Tons of co- comics. So our little li- Hannah's library has Hoopla now. I, I get. She was giving out cards for Hoopla based on our library. So yeah. Dang, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I, I yeah. love I love Hoopla. Um, you can get all, read all kinds of trades and treasury editions and the expensive books and stuff that way. Um, it's awesome, and you know, no fees. You only get them for like three three weeks, I think. Um, but still, it's cool. Can't be that. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, so IDW has been working under an expired uh, distribution agreement with uh, Diamond for quite some time, and uh, they've just kind of like when you just keep li- living in a place after your lease is up. And nobody yeah, talks about pay, it. and you just pay month to month, and then you. But you can leave anytime you want because you're no longer you didn't mm-hmm. sign a new lease. You're just paying month to month, right? So that's that's kind of what IDW is doing, and um, they have decided to join Penguin Random House effective June 2022. So quite a ways off. Oh. I thought you were going to say they were following James Tinney into what's it face? <laughs> IDW is going to Substack. Uh, no, yeah, that exactly. would suck. Um, no, they're going to they're going to be going to Penguin. Uh, the terms of the deal look very similar to what Marvel did. So, for retailers, uh, you're going to be able to get distribution of IDW comics from Penguin for the fifty percent off deal, free shipping. Um, and then, but if you if you don't want to deal with um, Penguin Random House. You can stay with Diamond, and Diamond will be a wholesaler of IDW products, but like they are with Marvel, so the discount will be much less. Um, but you could still continue to get your IDW products through Diamond, just at a much worse discount. And mm. as we we spoke to Eric about this in the past, and we, we he does he does think there will be folks that don't migrate to Penguin. And just eat it on, and continue to get Marvel product and other product through Diamond at the lesser discount. So, um, I I, th- I think it's going to be an eighty five percent migration going the other way, though. I don't think it's going to be much, um, especially if there's more and more publishers leaving. Determining, it, it's it's. I mean, Marvel should have been enough to incentivize you to set up an account. But now, mm-hmm. if if other uh, smaller publishers continue to join, um, then there's no reason not to, not not to set it to set it up. Um, I'm kind of concerned about Diamond because I don't know that Penguin Random House wants to distribute um, Ahoy Comics, uh, Avatar books. You know, some of the smaller publishers in the back. Uh, so I, I want Diamond to exist because they distribute a lot of indie comics that I really like. Um, so I, I don't know, man. I'm, I hope Image doesn't leave. If Image, yeah, if, it, if Image leaves Diamond, I mean, they're really going to be hurting. I know they have like that Jeppy and. Enterprises that owns Diamond also owns a lot of little businesses. So you know they they do the bags and boards and they do like different gaming things and magic stuff and stuff like that. So I mean they've got a, they're very diversified. So they're fine as far mm-hmm. as a corporation is concerned. I just don't want Diamond to go under and stop distributing comics because I don't know if there's I don't know who will pick them up. Well, who will we bra- blame if Diamond's not there? That's who we blamed for the last three decades whenever anything had an issue yeah well now now we get to blame well like like are we blaming lunar for all the dc delays are we blaming dc for picking a chinese printer i mean Mm. i think we're going straight to the publisher and blaming them and bypassing lunar uh, as the as the person that's getting the blame although i think there have been dc issues for a while right with as far as yeah, delivery definitely. before before any of the supply chain problems um so yeah yeah so when whenever penguin starts what is that that's like in two weeks right yeah yeah penguin will start shipping the that stuff out we'll see we'll see how they handle it um i'm, I'm curious if, if like if marvel products just starts coming in all beat to heck 
<laughs> you know, because the, they're used to shipping books and not uh, collectibles and just, and not floppies. They just they just get cur- just crush them. <laughs> like you can't get a nine eight marble to save your life. Uh, that'll be crazy. That'll be crazy. I, we'll see how that goes. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think. I mean, I think we like the idea of non monopolies. But absolutely. I, but I would like viable competitors. So it'd be nice if Lunar and Diamond and Penguin can all coexist and um, not try to gobble each other up. But I don't, and I don't, I don't blame IDW. I mean, DC's kind of started this ball rolling. Marvel jumped and jumped and said, "Oh, we'll, us too," and Scout and IDW mm. and who's next? Do you think? Do you think? Do you think Dark Horse, Horse would do this? Would leave? Yes. <laughs> Dynamite. Yes. <laughs> Image. Of course. I mean, they're they're all going to if it's if it benefits them well i don't know what i don't know what the benefit is to the publisher Mm. smaller you have to give a smaller cut i i don't know i mean i don't know i don't know why why you would leave i mean i guess maybe yeah maybe the terms diamond takes maybe to diamond takes too much of a chunk and maybe that's why marvel and dc got out to begin with I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that reason. Um, we should probably look at it from that that side and not mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, the stuff that affects us. So let's check into that. Maybe there'll <laughs> maybe there'll be an article written at some point. But as we mentioned last week, uh, I want to reiterate that we do have the list of uh, CGC comics. 9.8 co- giveaway comics available for the fall slab contest uh, by our good friend and patron, Adam Pastory. Uh, they are Deceased Dead Planet 6, The Joker number 1, Future State Wonder Woman number 1, Catwoman 9, Amazing Spider-Man 21, Fantastic Four Road Trip number 1, Marauders number 3, Demon Days, X Men number one, Haha ha, number one, and the Green Lantern number nine. So lots of great books to choose from. So how do you win the, one of these bad boys? Well, you become a patron, or if you're an existing patron, you're entered, uh, and you can you can be a patron at any level. Go to Patreon.com/slash/ComicsFunProfit and Pick a level that you want with the with the cool stuff and access that you want, and then you get entered. Uh, we'll do that in the next couple of months. We'll give that away, and in addition to that, you get exclusive review uh, podcasts that you get to listen to, um, early access episodes, um, including all our interview series. Um, so you get access to our Slack channel. Um, which allows you to chat with us and other members and other patrons. You get free swag, um, additional contests, and even exclusive access to Drew's comic project um, that may or may not ever see the light of day except (laughs) on Patreon. So there you go. Um, Please, please do that. And now it's time to take a quick look at more previews, um, I know everybody's orders are due pretty soon, um, but we're still making our way through the, the catalog, and now we are in Dark Horse um, on page 90 if you're following along at home. And the first thing I see is uh, Bendis doing Joy yeah. Operations, number one of six. Um, so Bendis is kind of phasing himself out of DC or... DC is phasing Bendis out of DC. I don't know. Um, but he seems to be... Pretty sure this is a one of five. Was I set at five? Man. Don't get old, folks. Look like a six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's on sale November 17th. It is uh, 32 pages and three ninety nine. And uh, Bendis is doing this with who? 
Stephen Byrne. Stephen Byrne. Stephen Byrne and David Mack doing a cover, so those will be nice. Um, art looks really good on yeah. the pages they give us there. Yeah, I looked at some of these art pages. They look good. Kind of, uh, kind of like, uh, looks a little bit like Radiant Black. Um, the design of the suit and everything, so that's interesting. Does that mean we have another superhero book in Dark Horse? Dark Horse can't do superhero books. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I put my foot we down. Have another, yeah, another uh, four issue Hellboy series here. So much Hellboy. Dark Horse, that's all they got left. Mm-hmm. The Magnolia Verse, man. They just gotta, they just gotta crank it all out. Yep. Third issue of May's book. I started this, never got a chance to finish it, so I'm not, I'm not sure what I. I don't really have an opinion yet on May's book. <laughs> Classic Lemire, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Lots of Black Hammer. A new Stranger Things winter special. Yeah, seven dollar one shot. Can't make you happy. Eleven's first Christmas. Ooh, and we have a secret cover B. They're not even showing us the variant covers anymore. They've had some really cool looking covers, especially we, some of the the eighty style covers they've been doing. We might see that by the time FOC rolls around. Here's the open. A lot of hard covers and trades to things like LaGuardia gets a hard cover. Crema gets a trade. Children of the Woods, twenty dollar trade. The Joe Ciano book. The last ip or the last issue of Killer Queens. The last issue of Norse Mythology by Gaiman. Huh. Last Critical Role. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Critical Role: The Tales of Exandria, two hundred four. So the second issue of that four issue series, um, from the Critical Role guys. Yeah. Following the Bright Queen from their second um, campaign. It's another Orville. <laughs> I seem to have missed the first issue of the Orville Artifacts um, last month. So, oops. Uh, but yeah, I I do enjoy these Orville. They're very uh, much in line with the with the show. If you enjoyed the show, and since we're waiting an extra long time for the new season, can't remember. I can't remember who who is going to stream on. I know it got passed around and. I don't know where it's going to be. Hulu, maybe? Does that sound right? Maybe. Um, but yeah, so while you're waiting, you can get these little two issue things that are like. Oh, no, like they are two issues. Okay, 232 page issues. I didn't realize it was mm-hmm. done after two. And it's usually feels like an episode. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty good. I'll let them stack up. I read them back to back. Man, Dark Horse has a bunch of stuff finishing. So a lot of Dark Horse stuff done. I wonder if. Uh, Next issue, or next month after this, we'll be launching a lot of stuff. I, I hope Lucky so. Devils, the Colin Buns on its last issue of yep. that as well. Savage Heart is over. That one's over as well. See a lot of stuff finishing up. I mean, there was a lot of seemed to be a lot of twos mm-hmm. and threes. So I guess there's some that are in the middle. But like, like usually they, you know, if they if you're not launching a half a dozen number ones. You're gonna get, you're gonna have a little fallow period where you get nothing. You got nothing going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Doing some Dune figures. And all your favorite hard covers from your video games and your <sighs> art books and your Man. Minecrafts and your. So they must. Ages. They're ramping up for uh, Christmas, I guess. Yep. Yep. Don't know what to get somebody. Get them a hardcover. Mm-hmm. Coming out in December, or September, all kinds. Even stuff as far out as February. All right, let's take a look at uh, IDW, and we're got a, a new so- Oops, Sonic the Hedgehog, Hedgehog uh, comic, Imposter Syndrome. Imposter Syndrome, number one of four. It's a gem of the, the month. 
Yeah, the road to 50 continues. So this 1 through 4 is apparently still legacy number. <laughs> the road to 50 continues here. Enjoy a 10-issue long adventure leading up to the epic showdown in Milestone issue 50. I was I was always surprised before they started re, before they renumbered it just how long running Sonic had been. Mhm. I mean it was was this a 200 and some issues or something like that? Yeah. It was a lot. Uh, I wonder if that's actual art on the other page cuz if it is I hate it. <laughs> Oops. Canto 3 4 of 6 Continuing on the Canto, trying to catch that lightning in a bottle we had with the first ones there. IDW still publishing the Dungeons and Dragons series with Mind Breaker. G.I. Joe, a real American hero, by Larry Hama. Still writing that. That's awesome. Still writing. Then just a bunch of stuff that is not for me. My Little Ponies. Let me get down. Generations. Let me get down to Star Wars Adventures. There we go. By Cave and Scott and Andrew Griffith. And it says Tales of Villainy. Is that a uh, is that the name of the arc? You think? From author and artist Andrew Griffith comes a new Tales of Villainy. Uh, Asajj Ventress must face off with. Ayad Sakura, who is dangerously close to uncovering the early stages of the Death Star project. I'm not sure if that's a uh, a backup or what. Mm, that one. Okay. So, and then we've got High Republic Adventures, continuing to not be able to stop buying these. <laughs> and an annual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and an annual. And what do we? Remind me again what the rabbit's called. <laughs> you asked me too quick. <laughs> I know. I, I can't remember. I can never remember that stupid rabbit's name. <laughs> no artwork for the High Republic monster of Temple Peak. Turtles, we've got three covers. We're going to get three covers for Turtles 1, 2, 3. Yep, an A and B and an art retailer incentive. Transformers Beast Wars, Transformers 37, Transformers King Grimlock 4. Is this, I mean, what percentage of IDW would you say is licensed properties? 95 <laughs> I think you're right it's all it's all licensed properties and Yusagi or Jimbo <laughs> yeah pretty much that's all I had until we get to dynamite same here and oh my Reboot goodness Sheen, Sheena Queen of the Jungle is that a cosplay cover, or is that just a regular cover? That's a regular cover. Holy moly. Uh, Rose Bash doing the cover B. Yeah, I really like that one. Um, that may be one to make sure we grab. There's our cosplay variant. My god, Sheena. Have we not done a Sheena before? Yeah, we, we've, we've rebooted this. A lot of J. Scott Campbell covers on the last uh, reboot. Oh, okay. I picked up one. NYX number one. So this looks like a maybe a real book here. No, NYX is an existing property. Nope, Vampirella. Yep. Yeah. Same old, same old. I should have known when I saw the 46 covers. Yeah. Looks okay. They've got yeah. early artwork. It's all right. Ooh, Dying Light. 
by Fred Van Lente. Um, I loved this video game. This is one of my favorite games. Oh, yeah. That came out a few years ago. You told this me about is, this. Yeah, this is the parkour zombie game set in the Middle East. Um, it was superbly well done. Uh, the second one actually just got pushed to February. Um, so This is just a trade, is that right? Yeah, this is a trade paperback with a lengthy original graphic novel. Uh, tale serving as a prequel to Dying Light 2 and a bonus behind the scenes content from the smash hit video game Dying Light Night Generations is an essential companion for fans of the franchise well crap I must have it yeah and we seem to miss out on the floppies yeah, or, that's what I was trying to, it do, or did it happen floppies? I would never have missed these you might have we kind of gloss yeah, over dot we do we do dynamite just just move on from dynamite I mean, I, I doubt they would just go straight to trade. Yeah. Got a little James Bond. We've got some... Who is that? Jennifer Blood. Holy smokes. Look at these covers. The boys. No, this is only a graphic novel. This was never in floppies. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, because like the timing of it, like we're not going to know the storyline because like this is coming out because it's supposed to come out when the game came out. Because as of this coming out, it hadn't been pushed yet. So oh. I'm curious whether this trade will be pushed as well. Um, but note to self, I must have it. All right, did you go through Jennifer Blood? Yes. I'm down in James looking at Barbara comics. Yeah, I'm down in Barbarella. Deja Thoris. I mean, I'm just not clicking with Dynamite. I mean, really? I mean, Dark Horse occasionally, you know, puts something out that is of interest to me, but both IDW and um, Dynamite and I have not been on the same page for a while. Yeah. And that's okay, right? It doesn't always have to be for me. Yeah. Dynamite, I just can't. I'm just, man, yeah, not my thing. Boom! I'm getting there. I got to get through a thousand Vampirellas. Getting Dizzy number one by a Shea Fontana. Very all AG from Boom. A, an aspirational hero from the writer of DC Superhero Girls. Perfect for fans of Save Yourself. I do. Sometimes I'm a sucker for all AG stuff. There you go. Found myself reading Batman and Scooby Doo. The other day, there you go. Yeah, can't can't help it. Regarding the matter of Oswald's bar body, number one of a five issue series written by Christopher Cantwell. Where is Lee Harvey Oswald's body? Hmm, that's a cool. That's cool for fans yeah. of Department of Truth <clears throat> and Time Before Time. And and Cantwell is the uh, showrunner from *Halt and Catch Fire*, right? Sure. That sound right? I could be. You've you've seen *Halt and Catch Fire*, right? Nope. Oh man, you got to. It's got to be on some streamer. You've got to watch that. You'd love that. Why would I love that? It's all techie. Ah, all, I do love techie. It's all techie. Um, you know, the birth of Silicon Valley stuff. Yeah, you'd, you'd love it. Hmm, very cool. All right, Drew. So we are quite a ways out from Power Rangers Universe. We have a no, issue one of a six-issue series. Why, oh, why, oh, why are we soliciting a book where we do not currently have a writer? Ha! <laughs> How? How? How are we? What? 
We have every single variant cover that we're going to do. We have an internal artist, but nobody's written a story yet. Is that just a moratorium on how worthless the stories to any Power Rangers uh, book is? How do we have art without a story? <laughs> Again, these are my questions. Go for, there's, uh, are we are we seeing interior art here? <laughs> That's just crazy. It's on sale in two months, and we haven't written it yet. Yeah. That's... Or I guess TBA is to be announced. Maybe they're holding it. But oh, okay. It's not... Okay, it's not to be determined. It's to be announced. All right. That's a little better. Yeah. I'm, st I'm honestly... Honestly, I am... I can almost guarantee they don't have a guy yet. <laughs> or, or the guy they had got fired, and they have to bring <laughs> yeah. in fixers. Yeah. Poor girl. Yeah, I don't care about it. Power Rangers ever. And just remember, that's for the six issue series that's going to be going concurrent with the other series that's currently on issue twelve and thirteen this month. Yes. Um, then we got Magic Ma Master of Metal number one. Magic the Gathering, I take it. Uh, I don't know. Yes, it I is. hope so. I would hope so. It is. It is. But we are nine dollars a book, so. Yeah. Thanks for playing. And Jed McKay, my Moon Knight guy, is still writing the regular magic. Dan Mora doing these incentives for uh, Boom Studios makes me happy. Well, I got at least a uh, soft cover trade for the many deaths of Layla Starr, which was wonderful. James Tinian continuing to write for Boom, House of Slaughter number two. We're curious how long this one's going to go. Yeah. Ooh, something is killing the children short box. That's a good short box to have. That is kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's a really cool one. I don't like paying five bucks for a short box though, so I'm not paying fourteen. Yeah. Penultimate Eat the Rich. The penultimate Dark Blood. Missed Victor Lavelle's destroyer completely. I didn't realize that happened. It's now being solicited as a trade. Mm -hmm. Once in Futures on issue 22. That's awesome. Yep. Merck and Dolpha with a really cool uh, incentive cover. Mamo finishes up. Not to be confused with Maw, which is on issue 3. Mamo mm. is issue 5. Uh, Kyle, and that finishes up the Premier Pit uh, publishers. We're going to do the back half next week. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, let's hop over and um, talk about our uh, cover price let's books. Do, yeah, let's do our cover price books. Uh, starting with number 10, we have the Matrix comic book preview from 1999. While the recent trailer for Matrix 4 Resurrections copies of the first 1999 recalled Matrix preview have been moving briskly and hitting new high prices. Due to the comic being too mature, Warner Brothers requested a recall and pulled those copies and, and offered them to be returned. However, many didn't send them back, and this is a fairly easy book to find. Till recently, a copy could be had for under $10. However, with this recent news, we saw 13 moving on the private market and a 9.2 going for $160. At rank 9, we have Spider-Men number 1. Uh, this is from 2012, but I believe this is 2021 that just came out. Rumors of Miles Morales. No, this is that one. This is that 2012 book, right? Is that 2012 book? Okay, yeah. Cool. Yep. Remember that five-issue series we liked? Ah, okay. Yep. Uh, so uh, CGC 9.8 shot this to $183. 
The Mighty Thor number 134 from 1966. The MCU rumor mill states that the High Evolutionary, whose first appearance is in this issue, may appear in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and will have direct connection to Rocket the Raccoon. This doesn't seem that far off, which helps convince people to pick up 30 copies on the secondary market. And a CGC nine or CGC eight point five, going for fifteen hundred dollars. Tough to get those nineteen sixty six books. Yeah. At rank seven, we have Amazing Spider Man three sixty one. Interest in Carnage is picking back up a little as prices and sales saw an uptick last week. It sold nineteen copies, a high sale of nine hundred ninety five for a CGC nine point eight. And my son said, hey, guess who's new in Fortnite? I said, who's that, buddy? He goes, there's another Venom, but he's red. I said, is he called Carnage? He said, yeah, that's him. I said, I know him. (laughs) Teach him about Carnage. At rank six, we have Sandman 25 from 1991. Sandman is still set to release on Netflix sometime in 2021, although we're running out of time. Though that didn't stop HBO from announcing a Dead Boy Detective series from Steve Aoki, Jeremy Carver, Greg Berlanti is in development for HBO Max. Moving 16 copies of the Sandman book, a CGC 9.6 going for 200 bucks. Pirate Queen from Bad Idea. Bad Idea books. Bad Ideas book three of their final five titles, Pirate Queen by Peter Milligan, was released, released September first and took a week to properly ramp up landing in on this week's top 10 in the fifth position moving 33 copies on the secondary market and having raw sales of 28 dollars most bad idea titles have landed on this list so it'll be interesting to see what's next for dinesh and the bad idea team i hate them i hate them so I hate much them. yeah completely agree at rank four star slayer number two we've talked about this a few times first appearance of the rocketeer uh, we're up to $539 for a CGC 9.8 and still had 27 copies moving on the secondary market. Wow. Continuing with Noctera number one, recently Bleeding Cool hinted that I would advise comic book speculators to get ahead of the game on this one. Uh, so sales spiked, 36 copies, and CGC 9.8, bucks. And I just uh, gave you a stack of those, by the way. <laughs> you bought a bunch. <laughs> Whoops. I had a hunch. Does that count for something? Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you for actually giving them to me. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting on them. Special Marvel Edition number 15 from 1973. Shang-Chi's first appearance in Special Marvel Edition 15 can continues to see big sales post release of the very well received film, which for some odd reason I haven't seen because I'm stupid. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Sold 32 copies, had a high turning of 118% up, and a high sale of $13,800 for CGC 9.8 from a heritage auction. However, this is a huge price difference from the 20k 9.8 sale from a few weeks ago. Yeah, so why is that? Mm, that was an outlier? Up and down, who knows what the real market is. Yeah. And at rank one, Amazing Spider-Man 5, 46 from 2008. Of the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, there was a blink and you'll miss it shot of a delivery truck with F-E-A-S-T on the side. This leads many of the obvious conclusion that if Feast exists in the MCU, then so does Martin Lee, a.k.a. Mr. Negative. While Mr. Negative has a cameo appearance in the 2007 Amazing Spider-Man uh, Swift Shift issue, his first Full appearance as both Martin Lee and Mr. Negative is in this issue. More directly, it also features the first appearance of Feast. This quick reference helped move 40 copies with a 7-day trend of 126% up and a high sale of a CGC 9.6 going for $173. Will we see him in No Way Home? Probably not. This is probably just a fun little Easter egg. You doing 11? Yeah, I'm doing 11. I was just trying to open up the image. Um, it's Batman 112, the Lucio Perillo 1 in 25. Uh, this issue does feature a first appearance of Peacekeeper K, an off-the-books version, but it's mostly trending because it has an homage to the original Nintendo game Castlevania. Castlevania, yep. And I didn't, I don't recognize that. Um, you don't? No, it doesn't look like it. 
Uh, yeah, she doesn't have the, she doesn't have the whip, but she it's with the candle and wand and the and the I guess. behind it. That doesn't even look like a Nintendo box to me. Sorry. I mean, I don't know. Um, anyway, it sold thirty three copies and a high sale of thirty five ninety eight for a raw. So I'll allow it. Um, mm-hmm. At rank twelve, we have Amazing five oh nine from two thousand four. Um, Nick Spencer's uh, amazing run touches upon elements of this controversial storyline which revealed that Gwen Stacy and Norman Osborn had a relationship and produced two children Gabriel and Sarah Stacy it sold 39 copies and had a high sale of $15 for a raw but she never married Norman Osborn for that, that, that Oscorp money what the heck man all these kids still Stacy's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna have to read. I don't remember the storyline at all from 2004, so that's interesting because uh, <laughs> Gwen Stacy dead. So how is this like a alternate timeline or what's up? Nick Spencer writing a Spider-Man way before I thought he did. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think they're saying that he referenced this that happened in the 2004. Oh, okay, run. gotcha. I was gonna say. I yeah. did not realize he was writing it. Yeah, so. yeah that's a long run. Yeah. Uh, at rank 13, we have Oblivion Song number one from 2018. Uh, this is the Jake Gyllenhaal joint. Um, it continues to sell 40 copies sold this time. It had a high sale of $202.50 for a CTC 9.8. Uh, X Men number four from 1992. Uh, Omega Red and Mephisto are the characters that keep resurfacing after appearance rumors. Um, so much so that they are both running jokes after not appearing in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier or WandaVision. Collectors Ooh. are still buying this book. And it sold 22 copies. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, hope that didn't blow out your ear, eardrums. Um, with 22 copies sold and a high sale of $300 for a CGC 9.8. At rank 15, we have Ghost Rider 28 from 1992. As noted, there are loose rumors and speculation that a Danny Ketch led Midnight Suns in development. God, I hope that happens because I'm sick of talking about Midnight Suns. <laughs> Otherwise, it has sold 31 copies and a high sale of 265 for a CGC 9.8. I rank 16, spawn number one. Uh, 27 Please copies. Please tell me all about spawn number one. I've never <laughs> heard of it. <laughs> Um, and the CGC 9.8 sold for $239.13. Uh, number 17, rank 17 is Werewolf by Night. This is the um, uh, Black Eyed Peas taboo written book um, that has spiked to now a uh, 27 copies moved with a high sale of $300 for a CGC 9.8. Uh, rank 18, we have the Spectacular Spider Man number one from 1976. Um, add this to the Someone Knows Something list as a surge of copies sold last week featuring the first issue of Spectacular Spider-Man and the orig- origin of the tarantula. We're not sure why tarantula. it's Yeah, we're not sure why it's moving so suddenly, but it sold 14 copies and had a 7-day trend uh, up high and had a high sale of $500 for a CGC 98. So, someone got a copy of the shooting script maybe for something <laughs> and had tarantula in it and they told their nerd friends um at rag 19 we have infinite frontier puppeteer lee 1 in 25 uh variant uh it's got a great great cover featuring dark dark side sold 25 copies and uh had a high sale of 55 dollars for a raw this just came out last week dang in rank 20, we have Wolverine number one from 1988. Uh, they call it a long undervalued first issue of the Wolverine ongoing series. And picking up steam, sold 26 additional copies and had a high sale of $210 for a near mint raw copy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's quite healthy. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, now let's slide over and do our FOC. I don't suppose we got a email from our good friends over at Deep Discount. Did we? We did. There it is. 
Do you have yours up, Kyle? I do indeed. So, uh, of course, the FOC is our friend loader cutoff. It's our last chance to add a few things to our previews polls, a few things coming out. Maybe we get some additional art, a little bit more storyline, some other stuff, or maybe we've just fallen in love with the title in the last couple of weeks and really want to make sure we jump on the bandwagon. Um, Eric makes us this wonderful curated list from the Discount Comics and, and fires it off to us Friday evenings. Um, with it, he picks out a few items that he is seeing some heat and movement on, um, and we will feature some of those as well. Like He is talking about Batman Fortnite number one, the one-shot with the Greg Capullo cover. I did not see that, so I'm going to have to add that. <laughs> There is also Batman The Long Halloween special number one, a one-shot uh, cover A, the Tim Sale cover he's talking about. Future State Gotham number six, cover B, the Rose Besh cardstock cover. Titans United number two, the cover B, Kyle Nguyen, Car- Kyle Nguyen cardstock variant, horrible reading. Star Trek Mirror War number one, cover A is the J.K. Woodward cover. Gunslinger Spawn cover B, a really nice McFarlane cover on that. That is very nice. <laughs> Darkhold Iron Man number one from Marvel. He is talking about the Incredible Hulk Omnibus hardcover, uh, volume one, the old Jack Kirby Incredible Hulk. Moon Knight number one going to a third print with a Cappuccio. Cappuccio. I'm in. Cover either Iron either Man. way, yeah. Young Avengers hardcover. Uh, these people are about to blow up, so if you can't get their floppies, read about them here. Army of Darkness, 1979, number two. Cover M, the FOC bonus Fleeks and Forstner cover. Oh, uh, I got like a little some, some stray dogs on there. Uh, exactly. And Rick and Morty, Mr. Nimbus, number one, cover A, the Lee cover. That's so let's not take Eric's word for it. Let's dig into the FOC and see what we can find. Starting with Wonder Girl number four from DC, uh, Joelle Jones on the cover of this one, I believe. Or she's doing the writing. She may not be on the cover of this one. Yeah, why is there so few um, on the list here? DC, but then Lunar has a bunch. Am I, am I looking in the wrong place? Oh, okay, There, there's more. There's more. Forget it. I saw that Ahoy, and I was like, oh, there's only like five DC. Yep. A few more under it. A few more. Yeah, we have the Batman Fortnite number one. We got a cover A, a cover B, and a 1 in 25 Donald Mustard card stock as well on that one. So. Long Halloween. Tim Sale doing all covers of that one. Nubia and the Amazons is cool. Looks looks cool. Justice League looks awesome. Pennyworth Cat is cool. Catwoman, Lonely City, a four issue Cliff Chang book. Oh, uh, from the dark, uh, the uh, from the uh, Black Label imprint. Which one is that? Catwoman, Lonely City. Oh wow. Doing a Why the Last Man TV tie in reprint. It's pretty cool. Yeah, DC's got some all kinds of stuff. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. I love I love Cliff Chang too, man. Why am I not seeing that cover? Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's great. And from <laughs> Scout Comics, we have Redshift number four, Snatch number three, and We Don't Kill Spiders number two. Dark Horse is going to go to a second volume of No One Left to Fight. This is that Aubrey Sitterson book that. I think a blue, the first issue blew up, kind of, and then faded yeah, quickly. Yeah, very sought after. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't see that happening again. I think it was just the one, and I don't think it lasted mm. that long. 
Do we get to see the Eastman ongoing for TMNT? No, of course not. <laughs> but the one in tens have been popping pretty good off the bat for these. Yeah, uh, that's true. TMNT ongoing and that Sarah Petrie De Rocher one, a uh, very good cover. I like that. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, what are Transformers Wreckers Tread and Circuits? The the Wreckers, I believe, are the Constructicons, aren't they? Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know on the Wreckers. The Wreckers are more of a new generation, I think. Yeah, you can't you you can't know it all. Yeah, because they're st okay. They're stunt. They're like the, st you know, they're essentially the the Transformers sponsored by Red Bull. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so they were after my OG generation. Uh, down an image, um, Department of Truth uh, goes into a second printing for most of its <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All getting a second print, which means there'll probably be something hidden in some of these and some weird ones, and yeah. one of these will be the one to have. And um, do we we really have a we have Robert Kirkman doing the cover for Gunslinger Spawn number one? Is that the one, Eric? So like that wasn't the no. He picked the he yeah he just had the the cover A if I remember correctly. And I can get. You know, he had to cover. He had to be McFarland. I mean, Nick Kirkman can't be. He can't be any good at, at drawing. He's he's never drawn anything, has he? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, I think that you gotta have it. Kind of gotta have that, don't I? Yeah. Because I mean, you're gonna go to cons, and Kirkman's just gonna be signing nothing but Walking Dead, and you're gonna walk up with Gunslinger Spawn, and he's gonna be like, "That's what's up." Well, I'm never gonna go to. Con where Kirkman is probably. <laughs> um, he, and when he does go to cons, he sits in on high in his image booth now or Skybound booth, and he signs for like forty five minutes. If I recall, how dare you? He's not one of the people anymore, man. How dare you throw rocks at the only one holding the line at two ninety nine? That's well, he's not even do that. That's that's Todd McFarlane. Yep. And Gunslinger Spawn, uh, don't forget Tauntaun Revolver. So... The the thing that uh, Luke slept in on in Empire? Yeah, so... <laughs> so Star Wars creature long... Or, you know, cylindrical gun format. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah, that's super tempting. I think I might have to cr spend the money on that one. Mm -hmm. It's it's not expensive, so I mean, come on now. Well, it's expensive, but it's not a it's not a ratio or anything. Exactly. You do what I bet. It's a six dollar book, Kyle. You should be putting your you should be throwing a fit. How dare he? That's <laughs> true. Greedy I, I bastards. Just, yeah. And a six sidekicks is not a five issue miniseries, is it? No. We're still going to say that's uh, ongoing. Good. Daredevil number one Halloween Comics Extravaganza 2021. A new Daredevil rises to protect Hell's Kitchen. So. Maybe uh, an under ordered. Piece of this uh, Zadarsky Daredevil story. What's the? Um... Oh wait, no, this is a, that's the Thirty Four Center. So that's one of the. That's probably a reprint and a giveaway. Yeah, and we can get a a Hawkeye number one. That's that's definitely worth it. Yeah. Reprint of the Kelly Thompson first mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Still don't know why it's the book to have, but that's okay. Gotta get a new night, third printing. Because I'm a yes. sheep. I, I have to. Yep. Uh, the Star Wars High Republic number one is reprinting 
their book, right? Yep. Um, same cover we've had before. Cool. Well, I mean, yeah. so nothing different on that cover, at least. But if you missed it, hundred percent. X-Men Trial of Magneto going to a second print. Yeah, Dark. Did you already say Dark Ages went to a second print already? You don't say that. It's pretty cool. Of course, it's Tom Taylor. What do you expect, right? Yeah. You tempted to get that Young Avengers omnibus hardcover for since it's only fifty bucks, half price. I already have that issue one, so I'm good. And then uh, from AWA, we have the ETER one shot. Intergalactic virus liquefying one of your heads. Feeling a bit off ever since you drove through that black hole? Then visit the ETER, the galaxy's leading medical facility. This interplanetary crew of doctors, nurses, paramedics, and technicians is uniquely qualified to cure what ails you. There's no planet too far, no asteroid too small, no patient too, well, alien. And they accept most forms of insurance. This supersized debut special includes two stories of medical madness that are out of this world. Thank you, AWA, for doubling your size, but not your price. We love you. Yeah, you remember that movie, that Spielberg movie, E.T.? Everybody loved that. Remember that show, mm. E.R.? Everybody loved that. Let's put those sure. together. <laughs> what if we put that together? What's next? What does we'll do... the intergalactic George Clooney look like? Yeah. What else did people like in the 90s? How about, uh... <laughs> let's, let's do Crystal Seinf Pepsi. Seinf Crystal Pepsi. Let's throw that in there. <laughs> Seinfeld Friends. Let's stick that in there somewhere. That's right, yeah. Dead box gets a second issue. Kyle would like to point out that that's red box. Yes, correct. Correct. A curse at red box. Chicken Devil number one. What is it? We've Chicken Devil? Chicken Devil from Aftershock. <laughs> we just have the cover C here. I think uh, the other ones came out subsequently. Um, but we got to get this mask issue here. Mask variant cover edition. We talked about this because it was talking about Memphis hot chicken. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We ha we have a we have a bleed over uh, variant here for uh, cover C. Okay. But the actual aftershock books cross to bear number one uh, by Marco Stoyakovic. Jack the Ripper was never caught because no one was looking for him in the Wild West. Yeah. No one except The Order, an organization made up of the descendants of crusaders sworn to eradicate the unnatural. The Order will stop at nothing to fulfill the pledge their forefathers made, even if it means crossing the ocean or a line or two. Yeah. That seems pretty dope. Yeah, it does. Um, Xenoscope's giving us one last crack at getting Rise of the Dijin number one. It's a three issue miniseries. And um, Dijin is a genie, right? Correct. So uh, nobody knows what a Dijin is or how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. So I think your book would sell better if it was Rise of the Genie. Um, okay. And that would probably tell people a little bit more about what your book is yeah. not trying to tell you guys at Zenoscope how to do your job Mr. Kevin Grevy Ox and Paolo Pantalina I'm sure you guys know what you're doing and I, I, I don't yeah it's just a dumb word it's a dumb word that I don't know how to say and I don't think a lot of people know what it means there you go I skipped on accident in Aftershock After Dark number one the one shot Cullen Bum Colin Bunn, Jim Starlin, Joe Pruitt, Frank Thierry writing stories on this one. 
Tales from the Crypt meets the Twilight Zone. Four tales of horror, lost souls, and things that go bump in the night. A prestige format one shock. Ah. Featuring top creative talent just in time for the most horrific month of the calendar year. After Dark is a collection of tales you'll want to read with the lights on. So, Very nice. Uh, I, I like anthology. I know a lot of people... Not a lot. I know some. there's a, a lot of people that do not like anthologies. But I dig them. I dig them. I mean, I, I don't think I want to read them all the time every week but i also don't need to have like a connected universe every week either so I, I like mixing them in what do you think are you you anthology guy no typically not you're not nope so you're those people yes you are those also we have uh, in this uh one of these is a uh, a black eyed kids pick up oh that's fantastic yeah oh man i gotta get that now I was gonna say I'm, I really dug Black Eyed Kids. So. Oh, that, that was such a great run. Loved it. Mm-hmm. All right, dude. Let's do hot ten. Hot ten. Now that we've talked about FOC and the things that come up, let's head on over to CBSI, our good friends at Comic Book Invest, and look at their hot ten. I'm gonna start at number one just for kicks to change things up. Tales of Suspense, number fifty-seven, written by Stan Lee. Sales. For the last 10 days, a 9.4 went for $17,000, a 9.2 went for 11400 and a 3.0 went for 750 This was probably a way undervalued key for a long time, but that is definitely not the case anymore. This is the first Iron Man? Right? I don't know. No. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Or is it the first Hawkeye? Uh, they talk about Hawkeye a lot in it, so maybe Hawkeye. All right, I'm googling that because I gotta know. I'm pretty sure. It, it I, I would think that. I would think that it, it would have spiked already, but maybe not. First appearance of Avengers archers, Hawkeye. Yeah, it's first Hawkeye. Okay, duh. Because I didn't think I was like then not look. The Iron Man's the one with the gray Iron Man on the front. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but, I, you know, Number that 3.0 for 750 that seems like a deal. There you go. Bargain at half, twice the price. Yeah. At rank two, we have Grendel, number one, Matt Wagner. With Primer, number two, out of most people's price range, the easy fallback is the first solo title. A 9.6 sold for almost $800. And a CBS, CBCS 9.4 sold for 400 Both are significant increases from the last sale. Grendel coming to Netflix is a pretty awesome thing. Um, you ever read a Grendel? I have not. I don't think I have either. Um, so I don't even really know much about the character. Uh, what, what to expect. It looks a little supernatural, right? Mm-hmm. We'll see. We shall see at rank three. We have Red Room number four of the Jim Rug one in ten variant. A spawn homage definitely doing well on the aftermarket, selling in the forty to fifty dollar range. Not really feeling this one to be honest, but hey, to each their own. Oh man, you, you can't not like that. It's a it's a cool homage to spawn. There you go. At rank four we have Venom number three, the Donnie Cates run Null getting some love again as nine point eights are approaching four hundred dollars again. Which is a hundred dollars higher than last week? Is there a modern villain that we will probably that we should probably get behind? I think Null is the one. And okay, so since the Sony agreement bought all Spidey and Spidey villains, was that like at a point in time? Like so new. Spidey related villains don't count in the Sony deal, right? So they don't get null. They, they got they got no. Venom, they got Carnage. They don't they wouldn't get null, right? I don't believe so. I would, I would have not to... think. Okay. So like if they do like a Venom 3, they couldn't put null in it because they don't own null. Correct. Cuz he wasn't created at the time of the agreement. Does that sound right? If I had to if I had to guess that is correct. Okay. Fantastic. 
At rank five, Ultimate Fantastic Four number 22, Mark Millar. Art by Greg Land was just a $20 to $25 book. Then 40 now 60 to 70 Marvel Zombies seem to be hitting their stride again, and this is the book that everyone wants. And, of course, there has to be a debate on what is the first appearance. This is kind of a weekly occurrence we have to deal with, right? Yeah, Always. so Mark Millar put out um, his newsletter, not on Substack, Got it for free. Um, hey! And he had a little throwaway line in there talking about Marvel Zombies and um, I had to make sure that everybody knew that he created it. Um, and because you know, there was a what if episode, I guess, uh-huh. that was around that. And he said, there's a live action Marvel Zombies coming, uh, but you didn't hear it from me. That was like one little throwaway line in there. There you um, go. But live action marvel zombies would be amazing i i mean that would kind of take the sales out of a deceased series or yeah. movie right yeah. um depending on who gets to the who gets there first who gets to the, mm-hmm. the big screen first or small screen first um i think it's going to win that race and then the other person's going to suffer because of it but um yeah on the chat um, Adam's been talking this up for a while. He called it back when it was not even a twenty dollar book, and nice. said said bye bye bye. Uh, this is gonna this is gonna blow up. And he called he called that right. Um, and it definitely definitely still is. Fun. I don't know what what's the other what's the other first appearance. It's hard to tell. I'm not I, sure. I don't know. What Marvel that is. Zombies one. What, did they they come out simultaneously or? Yeah, I don't remember that that era. Hmm. Who knows? At rank six, we have Iron Fist number 14, Chris Claremont, John Byrne, and Dan Green on art. I guess news of Sabretooth series in January has piqued the interest of some collectors as multiple grades are seeing higher sales, including a 9.6 for 2500 and a 4.0 for 375 among others. At rank seven, we have West Coast Avengers number seven. Not your West Coast Avengers, nope. Drew, but the 2019 Kelly Thompson iteration. Jeff the Land Shark has his own series now on the Marvel Unlimited app. Prices of his first appearance here have moved up from 15 to 20 to 35 to 40. Does he have the staying power? Hell no. Kelly Thompson won back-to-back ones here at rank eight. We have Hawkeye number one for 2017. Well, there could be several Kate Bishop books. This first solo title book has sold a ton of copies in the forty dollars, which is about thirty-three increase, thirty-three percent increase after the trailer hit, which was an awesome trailer, by the way. Completely agree. This one is definitely helped out by an awesome Tedesco cover. You should be buying this guy's covers. Although the highlight of the trailer was the arrow selection in the back of the car from one of my favorite issues from uh, the Fraction Run. So just FYI. Yeah, and I think, I mean, they seem to be cherry picking. Maybe they're cherry picking across volumes, uh, but it looked it looked more fra- Fraction-esque to me. Yeah, but they're going for the easy, which is the first, I don't know, it's just stupid. You, these are not the books you want in my mind. You want, you want the uh, Young Avengers Presents 6, which is her in the outfit for the first time, and the first time Fraction writes her. You want Young Avengers, and then you want, you know, about half a dozen of the Fraction run, including Pizza Dog and all that other stuff. Yeah. At rank 9, Iron Man number 12, the Raza variant with the turntables. Um, that is a pretty dope cover. I saw that and immediately knew it would go up, and I was correct. Some covers just have an it factor. This appears to be one of it. Raza and Miles seem to be a great fit. Jim Zub writing Champions number 22, up from 25 to 30 to 40 to 50. This is another in the long line of first meetups, this time with um, Amadeus Cho and Ironheart. What other meetups like this still have room to blow up? This one does have an added bonus of the new Ironheart armor. I'd like to go on record and say that's dumb. Agree. Completely agree. And honorable mentions, we have Jim and the Holograms, number seven, the Jen Bartell variant, $60. Another 
Kelly Thompson book, by the way. Laugh all you want about these types of books, but they do sell, and hard-to-find Jen Bartel covers do as well. And this one fits in that category. Did you notice this is the third Kelly Thompson book on the list? I just pointed that out. Kyle yes, did. did. Kyle did. Yes, I did. <laughs> and the other honorable mention from the Wayback Machine, Vault of Horrors 35, Johnny Craig and Jack Olek. This classic Christmas cover just continues to go up and up, a 5.5, sold for an all-time high of $1,750, which is approaching the 9.4 sale from just seven years ago. I really hope she gets what she asked for, for being about to be the Capitate. Nice 10 center. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. All right, Drew, we've talked about the hot books. We've talked about what we're going to do in the future with the FOC and all kinds of fun stuff. But I want to talk about what's happening next week. I want to talk about our sneak peek. So why don't you and I start with Lunar Distributions and our DC titles coming out on September 21st. Fantastic. Let's do that. Aquaman the Becoming, number one, a six-issue series. Um, yeah, I don't know. Jackson Hyde. Jackson stands accused of wrecking life. He once worked so hard to quit. Aqualad is going to need all of his skills. Did I tell you I completely flip-flopped on Fear State? No. So, you know, before the sub-stack announcement, I was going to sit it out. I was like, ah, I don't care. I don't care about the Fear State. After the Substack announcement, I was like, okay, if he's leaving, and I'll read this event. You know, I was probably going to read most of it anyway because it was in stuff that I already read. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to try to chase down and read read the majority of that event. So I'm a flip flopper, Kyle. Ah, I knew that. I've always known that. You've but known it's that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Of course, we have uh, Mullet Cop from Scout Comics, which I actually picked last week. So I'm a little confused as to when that book comes out. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I do like the uh, Miracle Molly Secret Files one yeah, shot. Do- That's cool. Really cool That's a cool character. I like that character. Surprised how much I did. Jenny Frizen, another freaking amazing Catwoman cover. Mm-hmm. She's good with Photoshop. Nightwing 84 continues to do awesome things in all the different Nightwing stuff. Something was happening in a recent Nightwing that I was keeping an eye on. I can't remember now. Kyle, I forbid you from picking Mullet Pop Cop two weeks in a row. I will not. Suicide Squad King Shark number one. That is a dope cover B by Ricardo Frederici with the card stocks. Really cool. Wow, that's great. Did we have that cover during FOC? I think we might have. I, I remember the I remember A for sure, but I don't remember that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, A was a free comic book day book too. Yeah, that's true. Good stuff. Some very cool books. But let's head on over to things that aren't DC and Scout. And let's see what Image has for us. Uh, we got Frontiersman number one. And this is the uh, Patrick Kindlin and Marco Ferrari who did Patience, Conviction, Revenge. That's our book I really liked um, uh, a couple of years ago. And they call this a classic Green Arrow style adventure. So, could be they good. Matteo Scalera to do a cover B. Yeah. For nice. the superhero reader, readers looking for more, because just when when you need think superhero comics, go to Image. Yeah. That's what I've been saying for years. That's right. King Spawn number two, tons of King Spawn number one. Uh, last time, um, all kinds of different covers, all kinds of different sales. So, a very pedestrian three covers for King Spawn as it comes. But back. cover B is the word to have, right? Yeah. That's just amazing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Looks like a scene out of Seven. It's mm-hmm. great. <laughs> Mirka and Dothro's Sweet Paprika number three of the 12 issue series. T- 
Tim Seeley, of course, doing a cover. Gotta check that out. I love that Vac Texas blood cover. That's fantastic. Old Guard number six, the last of that six issue series. Yeah, do you think we're going to get a sequel to the movie? Have to, kind of, don't we? Yeah, I would hope. Think it did well enough? That was I think a, it did well. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it did well enough. I watched it. I really liked it. I think that was a pandemic movie, though. It never made it to the theater, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, down a dark horse. Lots of black hammer. And some tales from Harrow County. Not much else. Mm -mm. The penultimate last Ronin, issue four of five. It'd been nice having Eastman and Laird writing again. Which one was that? Last Ronin, TMNT from IDW. Was both of them on that? Yeah, you didn't know you didn't know they were back together, and this is what they were writing. Uh, I think I maybe I did, maybe I did. It's been a long time since that first one came out. Yeah, it came out a long time ago, didn't it? Hmm. So Daredevil thirty three is that um, what happened there? Why is it going to a second printing? I'm not sure, but we got a. It's part three of a lockdown. I don't remember anything special happening in it, but maybe it's yeah. sold. Yeah. The death of Doctor Strange. I very much like the Miles Morales tenth anniversary cover. Got some. Uh, got three moon nights. Two moon nights. Great regular cover, and then a Miles Morales cover, which is also pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Four issues of Reptile uh, ending, coming to an end. Ah, look at that cover of Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads, number three. That is pretty cool. Got a big old dinosaur in the cover. Awesome. Used to be monkeys sold comics when they were on the cover. I would, th I would think that dinosaurs also sell. Absolutely. Your boy Cy Spurrier writing X-Men Onslaught Revelation number one. If you have strayed from the ways of X, the onslaught is upon you. If he would bring the crossed world into that book, I would read it. <laughs> I do love his crossed books. A lot of Red Sonja and Dynamite. A lot of Vampirella and Dynamite. Eat the Rich, number two. In Boom, very successful. Eat the Rich, number one, going to Second Prince. Yeah, it was a good first issue. I'm looking very forward nice. to the second issue. Once in Future, number 20. Uh, Arthur versus Arthur. Citizen number one from Action Lab. A journalist tries to cope with being the only non-superhuman in a city full of costumed heroes and villains. Cold Dead War going to a second print from Heavy Metal, that George C. Romero book that came out quite a bit ago. It's a good looking cover. Due to popular demand, we've gone back to press with a brand new cover variant featuring the traditional pinup art from the side of their B-17 Air Fortress. 
That's a good cover. And it's coming out just in time for the fourth issue and the last issue of that Cold Dead War series. Good to see uh, uh, Heavy Metal Comics coming up with some, some nice actual Oh, yeah. Comics, they've, you know. They've really stuff. cranked them out, too. It's been exactly. some good stuff. Some really good stuff. I think the quality is really high. Mm-hmm. He who fights with monsters, number one, uh, from Ablaze Comics. Francesco Artabani. On All Hallows' Eve, a community struggles under the boots of the Nazi war machine when supernatural forces come to play a part in the conflict. From the artist of the best-selling Something is Killing the Children comes a Halloween tale that will send shivers up your spine. So, World War II horror. Impure, uh, impure number one going to a second print from Scout. So much good stuff. Yeah. S Factor number one from Action Lab, Samuel George London. An underappreciated sidekick named Gray Fox decides to rebrand himself through a new dating reality TV show for superheroes called The S Factor, where 12 female contestants fight for his affection. Meanwhile, his former superior, Dark Fox, is bewildered as to why he would put himself in such a vulnerable position. So, The Bachelor meets Batman and Robin. <laughs> Here's our Scouts Honor Trade paperback we talked about. It comes with the patch. We talked about that several times. Snag that up. You got a patch in issue three. Yeah. You going to sew that on something? Or do you just press it on? I mean, I have a legitimate Scout uniform I could put it on. Oh, that's true. All right, Drew, I've reached the end of what I can find in here. So this is the point of the podcast where I ask for your pick of the week with the one book to make sure you snag at your local comic book shops because you guys to have it. Man, I was, I was close to picking that uh, Moon Knight Miles 10th anniversary cover. But it's, oh. Greg, it's Greg Land, and I don't think Greg Land people like him enough to, to, to pump him up. I like it, but I don't know that others will. So I'm going to go with the um, King Spawn cover B uh, that I think is um, really disgusting and rad. <laughs> when you find disgusting things, you're just like, you know what? Every once in a while, i got to reward it. And it is a $2.99 book. I mean, toe in the line, right? That's exactly right. Um, and I'm going to go back to Cold Dead War number one with the second print of this reissue uh, with the uh, really cool uh, pinup style on the front of it. I think it's a really good book. I can't wait to read. Uh, I think I've only read the first one, so I've got to read the other three as four comes out now um, and see what happens in that one. So that's going to be my pick. Awesome. We want to thank you for sticking with Drew and myself through our sneak peeks this week through episode number 670. Um, you want to get more from Drew and myself, head on over to our Patreon, Comics for Fun and Profit. Um, become a member. There's Slack. There's giveaways. There's uh, insides. There's extra additional podcasts. There's behind the scenes. There's Drew's comic book show. All kinds of er, comic book. What are you calling it? Comic project. Drew's comic project very good stuff there so head on over so for drew and for myself see ya <laughs>